I want to wrap up uh, this module by giving one more example of how to calculate a definite integral when we've got the function itself. Um, we went through about six or seven examples where we uh, were dealing with the same function. Um, so that maybe uh, diluted a little bit kind of how you calculate a table and things like that. So I want to make sure that you've got a sense of how to do this because a little bit of the homework is going to deal with this problem where you've got a function instead of a table. So let's tackle this problem. We want to estimate the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx using a trapezoidal sum and I'm going to say four subintervals. All right. So I'm going to make this graph here, uh, not because you need to make a graph as you're going through this, but just because I think it's going to help you to get a sense of how what kind of table we're going to build. So this is what sine of x might look like generally going from 0 to pi. And we want four subintervals. So I need to have kind of one. I need to break this interval into four pieces. And so I'm kind of doing that and that and that. And this is going to be um, the estimate that I'm going to come up with. So the idea is what are these x values so that I can calculate those y values. All right. And so the idea is that since we're going from 0 to pi and breaking it into four pieces, basically our values are going to be pi over 4, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 4. OK, so this graph, as I say, is not very important, but it kind of illustrates what my next step is going to be here. I want to have an x and a sine of x. And so I'm going to be interested in it for these five values, 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. All right. And so now I showed you uh, at the beginning of the module of how to do this using uh, a spreadsheet which is very helpful, but why don't I go ahead and do it with my calculator? Um, all right, so if I press shift, there's my pi. And if I calculate sine of pi, whoops. So the reason that I came up with this answer is because I'm in degree mode. Remember, calculus is always in radians mode. So make sure your calculus calculator is in radians mode. All right, and so sine of pi is equal to zero, just like it should be. Sine of 0 is equal to 0, just like it should be. All right. Pi divided by 4 is that. And sine of that is equal to 0 0.707. I'll do this to three decimal places. Um, a problem probably would tell you that. Pi divided by 2 is equal to that. and sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And lastly, I want to do pi times 3 divided by 4. And sine of that is equal to the same 0 0.707. All right. So now that I've got that, I can estimate my answer. OK, so this is going to be the same thing that we've done before. I'm going to estimate using a trapezoidal sum. And so the area of, actually, if I wanted to think of it, I could pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Kind of do the table this way, just so it looks like what we just did in the last problem. 0, 0 0.707, 1, 0 0.707, and 0. So. I've got four subintervals. Each one of these subintervals has width of pi over four. All right. And for each one of these, since it's a trapezoidal sum, I'm going to be using both the values on the left and the right. All right. So my estimated area is one half times pi over four 
times 0 plus 0 0.707 plus 1 half times pi over 4 times 0 0.707 plus 1, that's the area of my second trapezoid, plus 1 half times pi over 4 times 1 plus 0 0.707. And the last one is 1 half times pi over 4 times 0 0.707 plus 0. All right, so let's collect a whole bunch of terms together and carry out our common term, 1 half times pi over 4 times, well, we've got 0. I don't need to count that. How many 0 0.707s am I adding in? 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 0 0.707. And then I've got two ones in there too. All right, so that's my total estimate. And so let's add that together. So 0, I'm sorry, 0 0.707 times 4 plus 2. All right, and then I want to multiply that by pi. And basically, I want to divide by 8. All right. And so my total area there is estimated as 1.896. All right. And so that is the uh, total estimated area under this curve. OK. So basically, what I did is I went through the same steps I did in the last few problems. I built the table and I used the bottom and top intervals and the number of sub intervals to calculate which values I needed to calculate for the function. And then I used that table in order to calculate this sum. So there are two examples of that that you're going to need to go through and uh, give it your best shot. It's just a matter of using a calculator or, as I said before, you can use a spreadsheet if that makes you more comfortable. Or you can write a computer program to do that for you as well if you're, if you're inclined to do computer programming.